Firstly, navigate to raspberrypi.org, as you can see here. This will take us to the official website where we can download the operating system image. Okay, once you see this page load, navigate down to Raspbian and select, and then scroll down to the Raspbian stretch with desktop and recommended software and click download zip. While we wait for Raspbian to download, which could take quite some time, let's download another piece of software that we're going to need to mount the image onto the Raspberry Pi device. Okay. If you navigate to Etcher via Google if you wish, and let's download this piece of software here. So now we've got the Raspberry Pi image downloaded and we've got Etcher installed. Let's mount the image to the SD card. So if you just take the image and just drag it into Etcher and then just release the mouse, you should find that it adds it there. We can choose the actual SD. Just um, double check if you have a few plugged in to make sure that it's the right one. Okay, once you're happy, just click flash. Great, as you can see, Etcher has finished mounting the image to the SD card. The next thing we need to do is take the SD card out of the Mac or computer and then pop it straight back in. You'll notice that when you do so, that the SD card has been renamed to boot and you can see the files within this directory. So the next thing we need to do is start adding the configuration files to the Pi to enable things like SSH and VNC and pre-fill your Wi-Fi credentials. Okay, so to do so, I'm going to be using the terminal, but you can choose a code editor or something of your own choice. Basically what we're going to do is make a folder just outside of the boot folder and then we'll just move the files in later. Okay. Cool, to make it a little bit larger. Okay, so we'll just start by creating a folder where we're going to add some files. Okay, let's make sure I'm on my desktop and I'll just make a directory called temp. Maybe just temp. Okay, cool. Let's just change directory to temp. Cool, and that folder should be empty, as you can see. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is add the SSH, GPIO, VNC, and serial files to this folder. This will allow the um, Raspberry Pi to set these um, areas as enabled once the Pi loads for the first time. Okay, so to do so, just type touch if you're using a Mac. If you're using a PC, you might find that the commands that I'm using here are slightly different. Okay, so just type in touch, SSH, GPIO, VNC, and serial. Um, if you have any specific requirements for what you're doing, you might not want all of these enabled. Um, so that's, that's kind of um, up to your own uh, configuration and needs. Um, but for now, we'll just enable all of these. Okay, so once that's done, hit enter, and let's just see if they've actually been created. Brilliant. Okay, so now they exist in the folder. Let's do the last step. Okay, so this is going to be to add our Wi-Fi credentials. Um, so what we need to do is create a file called wpa underscore supplicant dot com. So let's just check it's landed in there okay brilliant it's there okay so from within the wpa supplicant.com file what we're now going to do is add some code that's going to allow the raspberry pi to pre-configure the wi-fi upon boot um, i'll just paste that in for now and then for anyone following along, just type this out on your file and include your own SSID 
and your own Wi-Fi password. So once you've finished updating the WPA supplicant.conf file, you should see the following files inside the temp directory. Brilliant. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is open up the file directory for the boot. Um, this is actually the SD card directory. And describe all of those files. And we're just going to drag them straight into the root of this folder. Next, we're going to unmount the SD card and we're going to boot up the Raspberry Pi. Once you've given your Raspberry Pi a few minutes to boot up, it should be online. Let's give it a try and see if it's working. Okay, I'll just paste in the following command that we're going to try this with. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is try and SSH into the Pi. So I'll hit enter and let's type in the password. Okay, so this password is actually going to be common for all of us at the moment because once you've booted up the actual Raspberry Pi for the first time, it has a pre configured password of Raspberry, just as you can see at the top here. So we can copy Raspberry here and paste it down below, and that should let us in. So now we are actually SSH into the actual Pi itself. So we can run commands on this machine down here. So we've connected the Raspberry Pi using SSH. Um, and now I'm going to show you how to connect with VNC. There's a couple of steps to this. Um, the first one is that we need to obtain the IP address of the Raspberry Pi that we wish to use. So if we go to the terminal and let's log back in to the Raspberry Pi using SSH pi at raspberrypi.local. Okay, cool. And then as before, the password is raspberry. Um, hit enter once you've typed that in. And you should now be logged in to the actual terminal of the Raspberry Pi. Cool. Okay, the next simple command is if config. And this should reveal all of the information about the IP address that we wish to use. Okay, so I'll just hit enter. And once that happens, just hit Control F and just type in 192 dot via the find. So just do Command F and then 192 dot and hit enter. And it should show you the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. Okay, so here we go. This, my, this is my IP address. So let's just close that. And then next we're going to download the real VNC player. Okay, to get the real VNC viewer, just type in on Google real VNC viewer and navigate to the operating system you wish to install it for. Okay, once you have that installed, you should see something a bit like this, um, probably with neither of these screens here. Um, so what we'll do here is, where we copied the IP address before, let's just paste that in to the top here, and then hit enter, and then you should see something like this. Okay, so the username of the Raspberry Pi by default is Pi, and the password is Raspberry. So. R A S P B E R R Y and let's remember the password and then click OK and we're in. So now you can happily use your Raspberry Pi via your Mac screen, keyboard and mouse. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, I hope it helps you out and uh, let me know in the comments if there's anything I can improve on any of the video clips as I walk through the steps. Cool, cheers.